You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts, on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There is a PayPal button at that website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for the week of March 22nd, 2024. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we're very quietly had a primary election this week and no one noticed. And we're also asking ourselves the same question everyone else in America is asking themselves. Is Paul Manafort better off today than he was four years ago? It's the professional left of Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Hey, Blue Gal. So what do you make of those Nikki Haley voters still showing up for Republican primaries? Uh, There is a post going up at Crooks and Liars tomorrow morning, Friday morning, entitled Trump losing double digit primary voters is a BFD. Mm -hmm. And I would argue that it is a BFD because if Biden was losing 10 to 20 percent of his primary voters when everyone else had dropped out. Mm -hmm. and his own vice president refused to endorse him, Mm -hmm. the media would be screaming for him to drop out. Now, that's a Democratic double standard in the press, I realize. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I think this softness among Republican primary voters, people who are turning out for a Republican primary, Mm -hmm. could, could possibly make the difference in a state like Ohio or Arizona. Um, Maybe there were there were over a hundred thousand voters who turned out in Florida to vote against Donald Trump, and I mean it's hilarious that DeSantis came in third. That's yeah. you know, right? DeSantis. That's I just him. funny. I barely remember the guy. A uh, little guy, big boots, white boots, bad attitude. Mm-hmm. Thought he was a fighter pilot. You know that guy. Yeah. That guy. Um. Well, yeah, that would be nice. I um. I'm kind of a mixed mind about that. I wonder how many of those people are people who already voted for Joe Biden in 2020. Mm. Um, and there's still, there's still vestigial Republicans are hanging out of the registration for whatever reason, mm-hmm. and they'll just vote for him again. So that's no net gain. And, you know, part of me wants to believe that, that's that finally, 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 finally um, enough of them have had enough to make a statistical difference that on election day, they will go down to the polls, they'll wear, you know, mask and a uh, dark glasses so no one can see them doing the <laughs> shameful thing they're about to do and cast a vote for a filthy, dirty, commie Democrat. Yeah. Which yeah. they'd rather, right. they'd rather, but part of me And those also, of us that are filthy, dirty commies think that's hilarious that they oh, yeah. think Joe Biden is a filthy, dirty it, commie. They just, yeah. they, they, it, it burns them to touch it. It burns. It burns. <laughs> and- or they just stay home. They just sit at home yeah, and stare at yeah. the sky and wonder what happened to their, their Republican Party. And you want to tell them, you happened to your Republican Party. You did this to yourself. But the other part of me has been watching Republican politics, you know, for twice as long as I've been blogging. And I've been blogging a long damn time. And I just have a lot of faith in the reprogrammability of Republican voters. Hmm. I just yeah. think they can be convinced of anything. I think they will believe anything. I think they are capable of rationalizing themselves into believing anything. At this yeah. point. And maybe that was less true 20 years ago. I don't think so. I think there were just fewer, obviously, fascistic choices 20 years ago. Yeah. But I think it's the, the same mob with the same mob mentality with a lot more screaming idiots at the top of it. But I have just seen these people in the depths of the of their despair mm-hmm. walk themselves right back. These are people who got crushed by Barack Obama in 2008 and were the Tea Party by 2009. Yeah, you know, yeah, and, and and independent voters by 2010, and they swept back to power. They just and they'll be the coffee party in 2028. Yeah. They'll be yeah. coffee filters on their heads, or well, they're already MAGA. I mean, they've already changed, yeah. you know, identity yeah. a couple of times. So I have enormous faith, being a man of faith myself, in in the in the way that Republican voters can talk themselves into anything, can rationalize their way into doing anything horrible. We talked about this last week or in the last podcast with um, they thought they were free. Mm-hmm. You know, the mm-hmm. rise of fascism in Germany. They mm-hmm. they can talk themselves into anything. They can rationalize anything. They rationalize that Hillary Clinton was worse than Donald Trump. Yeah. yeah. And and so I have I have abundant faith in the Republican Party's ability to um, be the worst people in the world. 
So I hope you're right. I, no, don't don't mistake me. I really hope you're right. I really hope. Well, and this people... is this is eighty five percent still voting for Trump of those right. of that right. of that thirty seven percent of the American public. Yeah. So useless waste of carbon, honestly. But you know Just... the um, well, I don't want to dehumanize them. I really don't. But uh, they are reprogrammable and and can ter- could have turned off Fox and maybe they will turn off Fox, but they'll go to something worse. Yeah. Well, I'm carbon too. Uh, so, you know, we're all carbon, honey. We're all it's of it. true. All of carbon based life forms. Uh, hey, this was a big week for House Republicans flinging themselves into <laughs> wood chippers of their own making. Yes, it was. Uh, for those of you who are shocked that Republicans would charge headlong into impeaching the president with no evidence and no crime. Uh-huh. How could they possibly be so stupid what, as to do what? that? How could they do such a thing? Uh, we're going to take a little No Fair Remembering Stuff side trip to the before time. So you're getting two kind of episodes in one. We you're always the combo, do this. Combo this is fire. how we're going to do it this year. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is back when we are told over and over again that, you know, back then people were more civil and polite and bipartisan. And we could Absolutely. do bipartisan things. We got along great back then, just before Trump yeah. ruined everything. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So this is CNN talking about polling over impeachment of Barack Obama. One thing the House has promised to do is to vote next week to sue President Obama. So we asked in our latest CNN ORC polling, what do the American people think about this? And look at this, a plurality, 45 percent, do think the president has gone too far, using executive powers to overstep what they believe his authority as president is or should be. 45 percent say he's gone too far, about 30 percent say he's got it about right. But look at that number, 22 percent say he has not (laughs) gone far enough. So Republicans could say, look, a plurality agree with us. They could make that case if they wanted to, but here's some important numbers. Should the president be impeached? Sarah Palin and some others have said, let's have impeachment proceedings. Uh, no. Uh, Two thirds of the American people, 65 percent, say flatly, no, uh, that dog won't hunt, to borrow a line from Bill Clinton. Uh, Should they sue the president? Uh, Still no. A clear majority, not two thirds, but 57 percent say no. Uh, Peter, will House Republicans uh, read those numbers and say maybe we should talk about something else? Uh, Not impeachment, but I mean, they're going to move ahead with suing the president. Sure. I mean, like this goes back to January. I mean, Ted Cruz has been saying for many, many months that the president's been violating the law. He's been called, he's called him lawless with his executive orders to, you know, raise minimum wage for federal workers or protect LGBT rights or deal with undocumented workers. Uh, there's no indication that they're going to back away from this. And these poll numbers, I don't think are going to and I think it, because they do have to worry. They're, they're talking to Republicans. Yeah, right you now. Do. They're right. not talking they to yeah. the general populace. Right. That's a- and here are Republicans fantasizing on TV and convincing their voters and audiences that there is a strong case for impeaching Barack Obama. It is time to appoint a special counsel to explore impeachment of this president. Well, what I don't like is that this guy is doing this by executive order, one after the other, and the American people are sitting like a bunch of schmucks watching a dictatorship emerge in front of their eyes. That's right. And you know what? And I think it is time to start talking about impeachment. He said yesterday. He says the president should be impeached for this. That's what he does say. He says it's it's crimes and misdemeanors. In in my view, it's a very, very valid argument. What is the remedy if people believe, as these polls tonight suggest they do, that they've been intentionally lied to by the president of the United States? What is the remedy? Well, look, the remedy the framers gave us for reining in executive excess, especially if it gets this abusive, is impeachment. He's become president panic. This is the key word, pain. This is almost an impeachable offense. Now, we've impeached a president for lying about sex with an intern. A president has resigned in the face of certain impeachment for covering up a burglary. Why wouldn't we impeach this president for not protecting and defending Americans in the bloodbath known as Benghazi? If people care about the future of this country and defense of our republic, they will join this cause of articles of impeachment against Barack Obama because enough is enough. You know, Governor, on the, on the issue certainly of the IRS, I agree with you. And, and for those that don't have the historical reference, that was Article 2 of Richard Nixon's impeachment. And in fact, that was only the a threat or the idea to do uh, something that the IRS did. Liberal and constitutional professor Jonathan Turley said, we 
are at a constitutional tipping point on the very lawlessness that you mentioned. Uh, Mark Levin, constitutional scholar, says this is a post-constitutional America. As I have been home in my district, in the 6th District of Minnesota, there isn't a weekend that hasn't gone by that someone says to me, Michelle, what in the world are you all waiting for in Congress? Why aren't you impeaching the president? Drift Glass loved the bit about liberal attorney Jonathan Turley, by oh, the way. yeah, that was just mwah, mwah, chef's kiss. You can't see it, but that was gorgeous. And so then this is Barack Obama on the campaign trail before the 2012 election, I believe, mm -hmm. talking about their efforts to impeach him. Even with all the actions I've taken this year, I'm issuing executive orders at the lowest rate in more than 100 years. So, so I, it's, it's not clear... You know, how it is that Republicans didn't seem to mind when President Bush took more executive actions than I did. Maybe it's just me they don't like. I don't know. Maybe there's some principle out there that I haven't discerned, that I haven't figured out. I, I, you know, you, you hear some of them. Oh, I sue them. Impeach them. Hey, really? Really? For, for, for what? You're going to sue me to do, for doing my job? Okay. <laughs> I mean, think about that. You, you're going to use taxpayer money to sue me for doing my job <laughs> while, while you don't do your job. So why didn't Republicans end up actually trying to impeach Obama? Uh -huh. There certainly was a passion for it yeah. in, in the mob. Uh, this was after the mob had rebranded themselves from the Bush-Iraq War super patriots to Tea Party independents. I'm an independent. I'm a constitutional conservative, originalist independent. Remember them? Yeah. They're the ones that never liked the tweeting these days. And never, but. never liked the tweeting. Uh, and before they had rebranded themselves from Tea Party independents to Trump MAGA. Yeah, it was that interim period. And it is the same voters, by the it's way. the same goddamn voters. The same, same people. voters. Yeah. The media doesn't want to talk about that. These are the same people. And, and if you sat them down and talked to them about their entire voting history, they vote, if they're old enough, they voted for Nixon, they voted for Ford, they voted for Reagan. Now, they might have voted for Obama in 2008. Mm -hmm. Things are bad. They tell themselves they weren't because because they'd been thrown out of work and thrown out of their house and everything was shit. Mm -hmm. And and Bush was had collapsed mm -hmm. and lied us into war. And, you know, uh, well, Sarah Palin was running for vice president. Well, <laughs> they didn't and, want and, Sarah Palin as vice and it was, president. We right? need someone to clean this fucking mess up who we can yeah. hate. We want to hate on it, but we want someone to get a broom out and a shovel and clean yeah. up this mess. And this guy thinks we think he can do it. We think he can change things. Yes. Even as we sabotage him every inch of the way. Yeah. Yep. These are all the same goofballs and they hated the Kenyan usurper just as much, if not more. Mm -hmm. And I think it is more. Yeah. Than they hate Biden because of race. Yeah. Race and being from Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also being younger than they are. Yeah. Unforgivable. This, this this Biden is old stuff. You forget. The reason we have two old candidates is we have a generation of people for whom the president being older than I am means I'm not old. Right. Uh, and if he's 20 years older than I am, that's even better. I can still that means get, I'm young. <laughs> I can still get with the ladies down in the villages. Right. I'm still right. hot stuff. Right. Yep. yep. So, Drift Class, what has changed between the era of impeaching Barack Obama and actually having impeachment hearings on Joe Biden. Funny you should ask, Blue Gal. That's a question I think we're all interested in hearing the answer to. <laughs> and the answer is the arrival of one Donald John Trump on the scene. Now, he didn't yeah. change the party. No. But before Trump, the party was led by people like John Boehner, who was, remember, absolutely willing to lie about Obama all day long. Yeah. But he knew enough not to launch some goddamn doomed impeachment hearings. That was just, no, I'm not that stupid. Now, remember, then RNC chair Michael Steele. Remember him? Remember when he was the RNC chair? He was also willing to lie about Obama all day long. Remember, 
RNC chair Michael Steele told rich donors that the Afghanistan war was, quote, a war of Obama's choosing. (laughs) Bush's war was started by Barack Obama because Obama was to blame for everything. And the conflict, quote, is not something the United States has actively prosecuted or wanted to engage in, unquote. So Michael Steele is just a lying sack of shit. But Michael Steele was smart enough to stop just short of calling for impeachment. This was, by the way, this, this, all these quotes about Afghanistan were behind closed doors to rich donors in July of 2010. Even Dick Cheney, who called Barack Obama the worst president of my lifetime, except for the guy who I was vice president for, the worst president of my lifetime, but specifically and overtly rejected the idea of actually going as far as impeaching Barack Obama. Because every one of these people, all Republicans, all party leaders, knew goddamn well that every Republican election depended on getting the mob whipped uh, whipped up over some culture war bullshit, right? Abortion, gay marriage, Obamacare, tan suits, flag pins, birth certificates, whatever, whatever, whatever. And getting that mob to the polls, that's the goal. That's why they hired people like Rick Wilson to do the dirty work that they weren't willing to do themselves. But they also were smart enough to know that they were writing something incredibly wild and dangerous. They needed the mob's energy. They needed the mob's money. They needed the mob to knock doors and and make phone calls. But things had to be kept at a medium boil. Not boil over. Don't allow it to boil over. Just keep it at a medium boil at all times. And this is what we liberals have been warning about for decades. And this is what Trump and Steve Bannon figured out. Mm -hmm. You will remember that just two weeks ago on this very podcast, Blue Gal, we talked about the fact that Steve Bannon really is pursuing a successful Leninist strategy to reshape and take over the GOP. And this is a key part of that strategy. Rather than letting Republican Party leadership mediate between himself and the mob, Trump spoke directly to the mob in their own very racist, very paranoid language that they had learned from Fox News and hate radio over the course of 30 years. This is their native tongue, and he spoke to them in their own language. The mob had been promised many, many things by the Republican establishment, but had never fucking delivered. Trump made the Republican establishment the issue. Mm -hmm. According to Trump, remember, everything was easy. Everything was easy. Everything can be fixed in two weeks, and it won't cost you a penny. And the only reason things were still bad, still awful, still terrible, still carnage was because the Republican establishment, the Republican establishment had lied to them, which is in fact true. The Republican establishment was the obstacle. They were the problem standing between the mob and all that the mob had been promised. Yep. And it worked. It did, didn't it? In the years that followed, the Republican establishment was either swept aside or they capitulated And creatures like Matt Gaetz and Jim Jordan and Lauren Boebert and Marjorie Taylor Greene became the public faces of the GOP. These zombie impeachment hearings are Republicans trying to chew their own legs off to escape their own trap. It's their own gum jabbar, blue gal. (laughs) Their own gum jabbar. You're going to have to explain that. I don't know what that means. It's from Dune. It's the box. It's the needle at the neck and the hand of the box. Yeah, well, that's part of it. It's, It's a pain box and the gum jabbar is the needle. This is their own box that they put their own hand in. And now they're trying to figure out how the hell to get out of it. And they can't. Anyway, that's because we saw Dune a couple of weeks ago. Yes. And and now House Republicans are answerable to only two authorities. They're answerable to Donald Trump, who has all of the purse strings. Mm-hmm. And to the deranged and heavily armed MAGA mob, mm-hmm. who will descend upon them with death threats if they don't <laughs> toe the line. Why do you think Lindsey Graham is in tears begging people to support Donald Trump? To send Donald Trump money. Yeah. Yeah. Trump doesn't care whether Biden is impeached or not. No. Everything's about Trump. (laughs) And headlines. And headlines. Right. Uh, Like his attempted extortion of the Ukrainian government. He doesn't care about it actually meaning anything. It's about getting headlines and having hearings. Something to feed into the Fox News propaganda machine to balance out his own humiliating impeachments. So that if Biden is impeached, then Trump's two impeachments don't mean anything. Right. Everyone does it. Everyone's corrupt. Everyone's bad. And Mm -hmm. and Congress always impeaches a president. Sure. That's just what they do, you know. 
they have to produce bombshell headlines. And it doesn't matter that those bombshells turn out to be bullshit or Republican dis, excuse me, Russian disinformation three days later. Nope. Which to me is just so heinous. Mm -hmm. It's, it's treason to take foreign disinformation and spew it. But this time around, the Republican Party under new management promised the MAGA mob more than hearings. Mm -hmm. The mob was promised blood. Remember, these credulous simpletons actually believe all the lies Trump and House Republicans and conservative media have been spewing. They believe there's a Biden crime family. They believe there's a paper check from China with Joe Biden's name on it. Right. And with thanks, comrade, on you know, stamped across right, the front of right. it. Right. Yeah. It's a Chinese paper check, irrefutable proof. <laughs> with bamboo, made of bamboo, because that's how you know it's from China. Just like the ballots. Just like They've the got, ballots. It's got panda poop in it. Yeah. <laughs> and they really believe Donald Trump is the innocent victim of vast liberal conspiracies and lawfare. Lawfare. Mm-hmm. Biden is, you know, the most corrupt president ever. My God, it's so obvious. They hear it on Fox and Newsmax and hate radio every day. So how come it's not happening? How, how come, come the impeachment isn't happening? The House is Republican. Well, it's happening. Republicans run the House. They should be impeaching him today. It's happening, but it's not going well. It's not going well at all. So um, Jared Moskowitz, who, by the way, wore a Putin mask to work and thanked so many of them for uh, disseminating his disinformation as Putin. Mm-hmm. You know, he really is the the uh, the theater yeah. on our side. Yeah. And here he is showing the Republicans up for the frauds that they are. More like this, please. I recognize Mr. Moskowitz for five minutes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. By the way, how are you doing? Good. Uh, Mr. Bobolinsky, over here. How are you yes. doing? Good. So I, I just have a question. We've been at this for 15 months now in oversight. I know this is your first time here, but do you think Chairman Comer has proven that Joe Biden has committed a high crime and misdemeanor? I believe with all the evidence he's gathered, yes, he's proven that Joe Biden has committed high crimes and misdemeanors. Okay, and so I assume you believe Joe Biden should be impeached. Well, that's up to you guys. But do you believe he should be impeached? It's yes or no. Well, I personally believe yeah, yeah, or yeah, you. under constitutional... No, no, no. You personally, do you believe he should be impeached? I do. Okay, and you believe that because you believe Chairman Comer has proven that he committed a high crime and misdemeanor? No, because I know that he committed high crimes and misdemeanors. Okay. I was involved and saw them happen. Right, but obviously, with all the evidence, you must believe that all of these hearings for 15 months, that the chairman has proven that, right? You re the question? <clears throat> sure. I... I I'll, I'll sum it up. I assume you believe he should be impeached. But my, my point is, is that the chairman has not yet moved for that. And, and so, look, chairman, we got, we got like three and a half minutes here. I mean, let's just do the impeachment. I mean, why continue to waste millions of dollars of the taxpayers' money if we're going to impeach because you believe you've shown he's committed a high crime and misdemeanor? Let, what are you waiting on? Let, let, let's just do it. I mean, by the way, we got Chairman Jordan here also, the double chairman. Why aren't you guys calling for the vote in your committee? When when is it going to happen? When when can we tell the American people you're going to stop wasting their money and just call for the vote on impeachment? Gentlemen, yield? Gentlemen, yield? Sure. We don't do snap impeachments like you guys. We actually do the facts. We do oversight according to the Constitution. You're never going to call for it. You're never going to call for it. I mean, you, where now you can predict months. you can predict the future. How well, do you know? You, only, you guys only have six more months, probably in power, right, until the election. So are you going you to do it in two months? You can do it in three months. Like tell the American people. Does the Constitution take... put a time limit on oversight? So so I don't think I didn't. I didn't read that in the Constitution. So, means, so you, if you believe you don't, you don't can't call for the impeachment now. Then what you're admitting is you haven't yet proven that he's committed a high crime and misdemeanor. You haven't proven it yet. Otherwise, you would call for it. I assume. We're doing our work. Okay, so so they haven't proven it. Right? They haven't proven he committed a high crime and misdemeanor. Otherwise, we would call for impeachment. So I just, look, you know, the chairman knows me well. I mean, I'm just here to help him, right? And so I just think we should do it today. Let's just call for it. I'll I'll make the motion, Mr. Chairman. I want to help you out. You can second it, right? Like, make the motion to impeach President Biden. Go ahead. It's your turn. You second it. No, nothing. Okay, we got nothing. So I want to, with my last couple minutes, show the American people that they're never going to impeach Joe Biden. 
It's never going to happen because they don't have the evidence. Okay, this is a show. It's all fake. They just want to do these hearings. It's not leading to impeachment. They're lying to their base on Newsmax and Fox, leading these people to believe that they're going to eventually impeach the president. It's not going to happen at all, ever, period. They don't even have the votes, even if they had it in committee. They don't have the votes on the floor. They know that. They got members resigning rather than taking a vote on the fake faux impeachment. Just ask Ken Buck, who said the speaker ain't going to get me to take an unconstitutional impeachment vote. I mean, boy. I mean, so, uh, look, I mean, if, this hearings, if these hearings were a success, right, if, if what we've been doing for the last 15 months had convinced the American people that Joe Biden committed a high crime and misdemeanor, you can be damn sure they would have called the vote by now, right? But they want it to go on. They, well, they either want it to go on because they don't have the evidence. Are you asking me a question? Oh, no, I'm, no, I'm just oh. looking at you. Oh, okay. But, but we, if you want to talk to me, we can talk. Well, no, I think you haven't read uh, recent data that shows the American people are well aware of the Biden's corruption. Perfect. So then ask the chairman why he hasn't called for impeachment, Tony. He's right here. Ask, ask Comer. Hey, Comer, how come you haven't called for impeachment? I'll do it. Watch. Hi, I'm Tony. Hey, chairman, how come you haven't called for impeachment? When are we going to have the hearing? When is the vote going to happen? I mean, I, you believe it. He believes it. He says it every day on TV. I just don't know when we're going to have the vote. I mean, you, just let's, you, let's just go. Let, are can, you asking we, me to hold we the can vote? Save, no, sure. I just like looking at you. Yeah. We, we, can save, we can save the taxpayers millions of dollars. So, I mean, look, I used all of my time to show that this vote is never going to happen because they have no evidence on Joe Biden. I yield back. Now, this is, you know, a thousand times worse than when Karl Rove promised a Mitt Romney landslide. Remember Mitt Romney landslide? Remember that promise he made that that was it was not even close. Romney's going to win at a walk and then failing to deliver because in that case, the base despised Romney, let's face it, but they hated the Kenyan usurper more. And so they were willing to swallow it. They were willing to go along with it, but losing, oh my God, losing now when they were promised irrefutable proof, a case against Joe Biden that could not be rebutted, followed by glorious victory. And that is what is at stake here. And you can only understand the scope of the crisis inside the Republican Party if you understand how the Republican base voters think, which we do. We fully understand it here at the Professional Left Podcast. With these hearings, they were promised the end of history, the end of days. All their failures and humiliations would be redeemed. All their dreams would come true. All their enemies would be cast down and trampled underfoot. The streets would run rivers of liberal tears and their dear leader would once again assume the throne and reign for a thousand years that's what they were (laughs) promised by comer and jordan and conservative media and what they got was a clown car full of fools and fuck-ups there's zero evidence republicans on the committee stepping on every rake they can find the marquee witnesses who are definitely going to finally nail the biden crime family either gone missing or reversing themselves, or in jail, or really effortlessly gutted by Democrats live on television. Did you see Tony Bobolinsky? Did you watch this guy the other day? He looked like he was trying and failing to take a very angry poop. Just <laughs> rambling, pissed off nonsense about his heroic family and hero- how heroic he was. You and I half expected him to hold up a third place high school shot putting medal. And talk about the time he got a B plus on that book report on George McClellan, goddammit. I did find it fascinating that one of his arguments was the American people are absolutely convinced that Joe Biden is evil. Right. And the it's, it's the Fox News. You know, all of my friends know. Yeah. Everybody I talk to knows Joe Biden's guilty. All the Fox News brainwashed zombies all yeah. agree that the Fox brainwashing zombies all agree with each other. Well, yeah, and, great. and the other argument he had was that um, Biden's brother, whose testimony said, "I don't remember the meeting," right? It's all that said. that was that was a flat out lie. Mm-hmm. When that claim, "I don't remember," was Marjorie Taylor Greene's constant refrain during her testimony. Well, and you remember, you and I watched Hal Sparks. Yeah. Take this guy apart, molecule by molecule. I, I highly recommend you go watch Hal Sparks from Wednesday night because he took yeah. Bobolinsky apart 
step by step. And he and he asked, is anyone else going to notice the fact that what this guy's really mad about is that Biden wouldn't go along with it? And that Hunter, fucked up the whole. De- yeah. Hunter, Hunter Biden wouldn't, wouldn't go, go with along it. with his business dealing because he's an asshole. And that fucked up all of his friends and Chinese contacts. That's what he's yeah. mad about. Hunter yeah. Biden wouldn't go along with it. Couldn't bring yeah. his dad along. Bailed out. And that's what screwed him and his business partners up. That's what he's right. mad about. That's what he's mad. He, he didn't get the millions that he could have made doing business with Hunter Biden. Right. Yeah. Now, meanwhile, <laughs> Democrats managed to get Lev Parnas on the stand. And I have to say, I know that this testimony we're going to talk about is fire. It's amazing. Uh-huh. But again, the Fox News viewers didn't hear it. Nope. And as far nope. as they're concerned, Tony Babalinski destroyed Hunter and Joe Biden. Right. That proved everything. That's what it's, all, that's it's it. done. Uh, and which yeah. again just ups the stakes because he clearly yeah. didn't, is clearly a, a, a boob standing up there screaming a bunch of bullshit. And when yeah. nothing happens, when nothing happens, then what's what's gonna happen to the those bastards who promised all this stuff? It just keeps right. escalating the deliverables and there's nothing to deliver on. And 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 to talk about the failure of the mainstream media for a minute, you mm-hmm. gotta love the language that the Associated Press used to describe this clusterfuck in a clown car. Quote, and really everybody take a deep breath before I read this, because you're right. gonna need a cleansing breath afterwards. So <sighs> there we go. Quote, the House impeachment inquiry into President Joe Biden has hit a crossroads. <laughs> Lacking the political appetite from within Republican ranks to go forward with an actual impeachment, but facing political pressure to deliver after months of work. Oh, God. Unquote. A crossroads. Uh-huh. They're under pressure. On the other hand, they they uh, don't have the appetite. No, they don't have the evidence. It's such a dainty antiseptic way of saying that both Donald Trump and the MAGA mob are demanding to know what the hell happened. Yeah. Because we all know we've had Biden crime family etched into our frontal lobes, just like 2000 mules or 10,000 mules or whatever it is. You know, we know the 2020 election was stolen and we know that the Biden crime family took millions from China, China money. China, China. Yep. That's, that's, that's all true. That's Someone all proved that somewhere. We know that. that's all true. Right. So, so why... why is it all turning to shit again? It's, yeah. We have to blame somebody for this failure. Oh yeah. Cause it that's can't what... be MAGA that was wrong. No, because, well, this is what happens after every Republican scheme fucks up and blows up. I mean, everything from the Iraq war to tan suits there there has to be a scapegoat because it can't be their fault the one thing you can never do if you're a republican is admit you were wrong and you mm-hmm. fucked up and you and you're sorry can't do that so every time the republican schemes blow up a scapegoat must be found and there must be someone to blame and the bigger the failure the larger and more comprehensive the imaginary conspiracy by enemies of the revolution must be right <clears throat> and this time This time, the establishment standing in the way of total victory may well turn out to be Fox News, which is Hmm. fucking adorable. This is from Media Matters. Breitbart's Matt Boyle says House GOP should take a 90-day moratorium on Fox News interviews. Boyle says Sean Hannity's show creates a perverse incentive for House Republicans pursuing impeachment. This is Matt Boyle, Washington bureau chief for Breitbart on the Steve Bannon war room. I think the biggest thing that the Republicans could do if they want to get this impeachment inquiry done right is they should do every Republican involved in it. So that means every member of the Judiciary Committee and every member of the Oversight Committee uh, and the Weaponization Committee, et cetera, all in the House Republican leadership should do a 90 day moratorium on Fox News channel interviews. Right. They should no longer go on that channel. Uh, And the reason why is because. All they're doing is they're just doing this for these little 30 second, 60 second clips that they can then go send around to their fundraisers to make it look like they're doing something uh, on social media rather than actually drilling down and doing something. Because as you laid out there, I mean, with Congressman Donald's laid out in that 
that that excellent clip there. It, they've got the evidence, right? Like we know money made it from the Chinese into Joe Biden's bank account, right? Like there's a check with Joe Biden's name on it, right? Like why is that not front page news everywhere? Uh, it's because the the media infrastructure uh, uh, among Republicans is there's a perverse incentive uh, to, for these like 30 second, 60 second little clips that they get when they go on Sean Hannity's program. Because Republican politics has entered that inevitable, the revolution devours its children phase. Yes, it has. Yep. And good eating, boys. Just <laughs> pile on the steak sauce. Get yourself a, 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 a bib and tucker, a knife and fork, and chew each other alive. Eat each other up. While Jared Moskowitz just stands aside and says, oh, you forgot. There's, there's a guy who hasn't been bitten over there. Go bite that asshole in the leg. The, yeah. These are the worst people in the world. The worst thing they did was give themselves a spotlight yep. and let the world see them doing what they promised they could do. And everyone knew they couldn't. And now well, comes and now the time. it's it's Bannon and, you know, the Breitbart and the Bannon right. and, and the Charlie Kirks are fighting for dominance at well, this the, point because Fox the, is Fox is bloodied at this point. That's the Leninist side of this. You yeah. always find a, there's, you know, your your enemy, your your ally during the initial phase of the revolution has now become your enemy. Yep. And now, yep. you know, the Bolsheviks are gunning for the Mensheviks. Yeah. Well, yeah. won't we friends like that? Nope, not anymore. We're not friends anymore. In fact, you're the problem. In fact, yeah. we're going to hunt your ass down and destroy you because you ruined the revolution. You're the problem. You're the one standing in the way of glorious victory, which we could have had. But if it weren't for the fact that Fox News screwed us over. This is and, why Lauren Boebert has has glued herself to the hip of Matt Gates. Yeah. Because Marjorie Taylor Greene made a huge mistake thinking she could get legitimacy mm -hmm. by joining Kevin McCarthy's band. And you see how that worked out for her. Well, it, now, it, Lauren Boebert's probably not going to be in Congress next year, but, you know, she'll be on the five. She's auditioning. Yeah. And, and if you just look in at, a miniskirt for the if five. You just, if you just looked at the speaker swaps, you know, yeah. from Boehner to Ryan to McCarthy to Johnson, it's like you can see the revolution eating its young, eating itself. This is the end of the Reagan revolution. This is these yeah. are the last dregs of the Reagan revolution fighting over the scraps. And they've become so radical and so nuts. And it requires someone who has a brain in their head and no soul in their heart and fascistic tendencies to see the way forward through this mess. And that's Steve Bannon and his his avatar donald trump and he's doing a wonderful job of turning his former allies against each other so he can capitalize on their loss anyway let's do a news roundup and yeah, let's do a news roundup the biden administration awarded intel with about 20 billion dollars in grants and loans to fund an expansion of its semiconductor factories across four states the funding comes from the 2022 chips and science act which provides 53 billion dollars in subsidies to boost the U.S. production of semiconductors. And this is what China did, too, by the way. Uh -huh. Subsidizing industries that are essential to growing the economy. Yeah, you know. Because right now, most of the world's advanced chips are made in Asia. The government grant is the largest yet from the CHIPS Act Award and will go to the construction and expansion of Intel chip facilities in Arizona, Ohio, New Mexico, and Oregon. The projects are expected to create more than 10,000 manufacturing jobs and roughly 20,000 construction jobs. Yep. Good paying jobs. Good paying union jobs, I'll bet you. Uh, the Biden administration issued the strictest ever rules for tailpipe emissions to ensure that the majority of new passenger cars and light trucks sold in this country are all electric or hybrid by 2032. This is President Biden speaking at a Texas fundraiser, quote, just the other day, this defeated looking man came up to me and said, Mr. President, I need your help. I'm in crushing debt. I'm completely wiped out. I had to say, Donald, I can't help you. Unquote. I, gotta say, I fell out when I heard that. I thought, yeah. okay, game on. Okay, we're doing this, huh? Game okay. <clears throat> and um, not to be outdone, Eric Swalwell. Gotta love Eric Swalwell, man. These, these The people that Hakeem Jeffries is deploying in battle, right. in strategic positions, are right. just fucking awesome this is eric swalwell taking a two by four to jim jordan today this very day 
uh, in that creepy transgender genital check bill that free range Wyoming lunatic Harriet Hagman is trying to pass. This is Jordan handing handing the uh, the ball off to Swalwell. Jordan says, "Gentlemen from California is recognized." Swalwell says, "I guess it's a good thing that some folks on the other side are interested in what happens in a locker room. We're not going to look the other way." <laughs> and I just went. And this bill is about wrestling. Yeah, it's transgender just, wrestlers. Yeah, we're going to look at your <laughs> junk to see if you qualify. And he, and <laughs> Swalwell made excellent points about this is stupid. This is ridiculous. This is not a thing. This is right. not a thing, but he did go on. This is, uh, again, Eric Swalwell. There is an on-demand gender check, so who's enforcing it? Is Mr. Jordan enforcing it? <laughs> is, Mr. is Mr. Gates enforcing it? Ms. Hageman, you're the only one who wants to speak on this. No one else will even touch this because it's kind of creepy. Yeah. And you, you pointed out, Drip Quest, that Greco-Roman wrestling was done in the nude. Right. There, there's your gender check right there. With people's junk right up against somebody else's face. Just make them, make them wrestle naked. Go ahead. Go for it. <laughs> do do the thing. But, the but idea, it was... and, and he's right, there, this is not a thing. No. He, he, he made the point that mass shootings in schools are a thing. Yes. Yes. People worrying that the wrestler wrestling them in high school might be a girl. Yeah. It's not a thing. No. And it, and it 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 is. And this happens all the time. This is the purpose of Fox News. Find yeah. some odd little corner of the universe where one or two things are happening. Yeah. Project yeah. that out as a massive trend across all America, which liberals are behind and it's a conspiracy and freak out all the idiots who do nothing but watch Fox News. That's that's yep. the process. Yep. That's the cycle. Yep. yep. This huge mess, the federal appeals court blocking a Texas law allowing state police to arrest people suspected of illegally crossing the Texas-Mexico border. Hours after the Supreme Court had allowed it to go into effect, allowing Texas police to arrest brown people without their papers. Mm -hmm. On suspicion. And on suspicion. On suspicion of not being here yeah. legally. And That's Mexico saying, we won't accept deportations from anyone but the u.s federal government mm -hmm. because of course they won't mm -hmm. well and that's the bright future that donald trump has promised us yeah. um former trump white house advisor peter navarro reported in prison this week navarro who claimed credit for the plan to overturn the 2020 election was convicted on two counts of contempt for congress and for refusing to provide testimony and documents to the january 6th select committee he was sentenced to four months in jail in order to pay a $9,500 fine. Womp, womp. Alabama, where I lived for many, many years, yes, has passed did. a bill seeking to ban state funding for diversity, equity, and inclusion programs in state institutions. The bill bans any program that, quote, advocates for a divisive concept. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's unenforceable. And well, uh, people are going to be suing for discrimination anyway. Well, I, I, I think it's on purpose, honestly. I think it is oh, yeah. making a, a, a blue law so broad that you can enforce it against anybody. The, the, the yeah. idea is to keep teachers, colleges, um, universities, um, doctors, et cetera, terrified yeah. of, of crossing the law. So they, they self-censor. The whole point yeah. of those kind of laws is getting people to be so afraid. Yeah. They'll so get we, can't, we, we can't uh, involve anything regarding diversity in our hiring process. No, no. or even talk about it. Right. A divisive concept. That's how a many divisive concept, concept. How many right. concepts are not divisive? You know, Jesus was not raised bodily to heaven. That's a divisive yeah, concept. That's a divisive concept. Yep, especially in Alabama. Uh, Lev Parnas, about whom we spoke a little while ago, was naming everybody from Trump and Giuliani to Lindsey Graham, Bill Barr, Pete Sessions, Devin Nunez, Ron Johnson, and Sean Hannity. They all conspired to push Russian disinformation and Trump still lost to Biden, ha, 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 by 7 million votes, ha, ha, ha. In more Lev Parnas news, quote, I believe Bill Barr should be investigated for the cover-up and trying to silence me to get the truth out of what really happened in Ukraine. Yep. So to no one's surprise, Bill Barr has now been accused of obstruction of justice again, Yeah. this time by Lev Parnas. But you know what? Bill Barr could write an inaccurate four-page summary of what he did. That he could. And then and Trump could, could tweet totally exonerated. That's right. And, and then it's all done because you know what? The the AP will then say that they've reached a crossroads. That's right. There's a, there's 
you know, some people say one thing, some people say another. Who's to say what? You figure it out. Um, in still more love, Parnas news, the American people, this is him now speaking under quotation marks, the American people have been lied to by Donald Trump, Rudy Giuliani, and various cohorts of individuals in government and media positions. They created falsehoods to serve their own interests, knowing it would undermine the strength of our nation. From November 2018 to October 2019, I was a key participant and a witness to numerous efforts to prove that Joe and Hunter Biden were linked to corruption in Ukraine. Rudy Giuliani, on behalf of then-President Donald Trump, tasked me with a mission to travel the globe finding dirt on the Bidens so that an array of networks could spread misinformation about them, thus securing the 2020 election for Donald Trump, unquote. And in still more Lev Parnas news, quote, Ron Johnson was our guy in the Senate. <laughs> and he and sure was. Ron Johnson, you know, my colleague Capper over at Crooks and Liars is, writes about Ron Johnson quite a bit. You know, Ron Johnson is the one who said the FBI set me up. Uh-huh. Yeah. By, you know, taking notice of what you were doing and then, you know, writing it up. And right. finally, in even more Lev Parnas news, Congressman Ro Khanna asked, quote, did Bill Barr know that you were involved in getting this dirt? And Parnas answered, absolutely. Bill Barr was notified of our investigations from the day he took office. Unquote. All of them. All of them should be in jail. What did um, our new favorite congresswoman say about the orange traitor? Oh, this, the orange this menace? was, yeah, <laughs> this, this was um, Representative Crockett from Texas. That's right said uh heathen yeah, bury this heathen. orange heathen under the jail yeah yeah and he said be... sugarcoating it jasmine crockett sugarcoating it and leave plenty of room for a couple of hundred other heathens to go yeah, under the jail with including, including yeah. rudy giuliani you know, bury, bury this like a... orange heathen under the jail bury him like a pharaoh with all of his servants and yeah. and side guys and fellow liars and all the, and all the gold leaf yeah yeah Fake gold shit. Yep. Uh, Fox News, Dana Perino on the GOP impeachment push. It just feels like they keep doing the same hearing over and over again. And people are starting to wonder at some point, do you fish or cut bait? Meaning she's asking her bosses at Fox. Right. When is this going to be over? When will yeah. this be over? People are starting to wonder, Blue Gal. People. People, people are talking. People are people, wondering. Some people say, yes. Uh, in breaking Stephanie Lambert news from the AP, pro-Trump Michigan attorney arrested after a hearing in D.C. over leaking Dominion documents. Stephanie Lambert was arrested by U.S. Marshals after a hearing over possible sanctions against her for disseminating confidential emails from Dominion voting systems, the target of conspiracy theories over former President Donald Trump's 2020 election lost because he lost. Lambert obtained the Dominion emails by representing Patrick Byrne, a prominent funder of election conspiracy theories, who is being sued by Dominion for defamation. In, and this is from Bridge, Michigan. Lambert's arrest is the latest in an ongoing prosecution of those who allegedly broke the law in their efforts to undermine Michigan's 2020 presidential election results. In her fight to discredit the contest, Lambert, seems to be entirely repudiating the rule of law. Mm -hmm. Chris Thomas, a former Michigan elections director, told Bridge, Michigan, these folks just want to keep beating the drum and there's nothing there. Does that sound familiar, Drift Class? Sure does. Apparently, it's too lucrative or too much fun to continue to spread the conspiracies. And Bingo. this is the question that I have, mm -hmm. which is Ron Johnson, why? Why is it necessary for you to continue to spread Russian disinformation? And let's not forget that, you know, July 4th, 2016, a lot of these guys, including Ron jo Johnson, went to Moscow for the 4th of July. And they have joked and then denied it that Ron Johnson was Putin's guy. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, and, and we all know and how so Ron why? Johnson... I want to know what, what was in it for them. Does Russia have compromise on them? Does is there money in it? Do they have hidden money via the NRA stuffed in some account in the Caymans? We will or is never it just know. fun? Is it just yeah, it might, fun to, to win points? It might that's how you maybe that's it. Maybe he's just yeah. having fun being Ron Johnson. This, remember this, how Ron makes, jo this makes you famous and gets you votes. So, remember how Ron Johnson got into office, Blue Gal? 
guy named uh, Charlie Sykes. Yes. He's a big, big wig, big guy in the uh, Wisconsin in the radio. Republican Party. Right. Uh, got behind him and pushed and pushed and pushed and uh, wrote this glowing tribute to him on the radio that got cut into a Ron Johnson ad. Uh, not since Paul Ryan has someone so principled spoken about Republican values here in Wisconsin. So, you know, that's these things all have their origins with people who yeah. would rather not talk about where they originated. Anyway, you were you were so, going to tell me more. Uh, yeah, Lambert insists she is only being targeted because I just knew too much. That would seem like a reason not to go after you if you knew yeah. too much. Yeah. And I have too much evidence. Lambert said Monday during a broadcast audio conversation. Lambert is a Detroit attorney who has worked on 2020 election cases across the country. So she's one of the lawyers that lost 60 times. Lost and lost and lost and lost. 59 yep. times out of 60. Yeah. And she has unsuccessfully claimed that fraud cost Do President Donald Trump the election. Numerous audits and investigations have found no such fraud. Yeah. So she's my pillow guy with a law degree. Right. And, who's, and now who's, she's under arrest. Uh, well, su surprise you should say that this is from CNN. A judge on Tuesday released pro-Trump lawyer Stephanie Lambert from a Washington, D.C. jail, but only after she promised to immediately return to Michigan and surrender to authorities there where there is a warrant related to her indictment on election tampering charges. D.C. Superior Court Magistrate Judge Heidi Herman released Lambert on a $10,000 bond which she will need to pay if she doesn't quickly return herself to Michigan authorities and turn herself in. She was in handcuffs and ankle restraints during the brief hearing in Washington, D.C. There's something seriously wrong with these folks. Yeah. And I, I, I hate to say this because I am a person of faith, so to speak, mm -hmm. that I think religion has a lot to do with it. I think this you're right. This belief that you can do anything you need to do in, mm -hmm. in service to Jesus Christ and if you need to lie for Jesus, that's okay, because God, I'm not perfect, I'm just forgiven. Right. And so they get so wrapped up in a desired outcome that they're willing to lie even within their own brains. I well, know too much. I It's because I know too much and have too much evidence that they're persecuting me. And That would seem like a reason not to persecute you. And anyone who disagrees with them is not someone who has a reasonable good faith disagreement they're an agent of satan yeah they're, right, they're right. they've they've been dispatched by satan on earth to destroy the good and noble christian republican party and therefore yeah. fighting against them using any tool available lying cheating stealing taking up arms killing them is yeah. legitimate because we're defending the righteous christian faith against godless heathen communist liberals yeah. death threats <laughs> for jesus yeah yeah <laughs> yeah because Jesus is white and Trump is his representative on earth these days. Yeah, yeah, seriously. It's it's bizarre. According to a report from Times News, the fast food chain Arby's has committed a $16,892 grant towards feeding Tennessee school children in Hawkins County after Republicans blocked a free school meal bill. Does that mean Arby's is woke? Yeah. they're pro-feeding school children? According to Salon's Joy Saha, the Arby's Foundation has committed $500,000 to support approximately 200 communities in which Arby's has a restaurant. Well, good for them. Yeah. It's yeah. too bad a fast food chain's foundation has to do what the taxpayers put legislators in place to do. And too bad it has to be Arby's, honestly. Well, you know. You know I still have a, a beef burger from 1977 stuck somewhere in my... Ew. Yeah. RFK Jr. Remember him? Remember RFK Jr.? RFK Jr. was stupid enough to sit for an interview with Casey Hunt on CNN. Hunt asked the most obvious question you can think of. Quote, you said there's no vaccine that's safe and effective. Do you still believe that? Unquote. Simple, direct, yes or no question. RFK answered, I never said that. Hunt replied, here's a video of you literally saying that. And that was the end of the news. That should be the end of his candidacy, but it won't be because... And really, there's something very wrong with Mr. RFK Jr. Something has gone yeah. very, very wrong upstairs. And there's people around him who are taking advantage of him and using him for plunder yeah. and political advantage. And the same, that's the, the, same, the same type of people that milked a section of America for QAnon yeah. is using RFK Jr. Yeah. Well, and 
And if you look at fascist and authoritarian movements and revolutions all over the world, you know, they the, the, the ones like Nazi Germany attract misfits and yeah. lunatics and Deeply idiots disturbed and people. racist. Yeah. Because it gives them a focus. It gives them a purpose. It gives them an enemy. It gives them someone to hate and somebody to believe in and a leader to follow. And that's all they want. And so no surprise the Republican Party is just morons and bigots and imbeciles and grifters and demagogues, because that's what the Republican Party is designed to attract. Meanwhile, the entire Kennedy family appeared with Joe Biden on St. Patrick's Day in the White House yeah. Rose Garden. Yeah. So, well, minus one. Minus RFK Jr. <laughs> yeah, he was busy. He was busy not getting a vaccine, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, breaking Joe Manchin says he will oppose all judicial nominations that lack GOP support. <sighs> this is my own little filibuster. Mm -hmm. If they can't get one Republican, I will vote for none. What an asshole. Because he's an asshole. asshole. Because he's an asshole. Uh, the Republican Study Committee released their radical budget plan. For those of you who don't know, the Republican Study Committee is chaired by Republican Kevin Hearn and is made up of, as I understand it, 170 members, including Speaker Mike Johnson and his full leadership team. Some highlights from their budget plan. Raising Social Security retirement age for future retirees. Very popular, I'm sure. Converting Medicare to, quote, premium support, unquote, which was the Paul Ryan plan, which everyone hates. Of course, rolling back the Affordable Care Act, because that's what Republicans still want to do. And my favorite, endorsing a Life at Conception Act, a heartbeat uh, bill that would declare that pregnancy begins after the second martini. And right. That's, right. I, also, if if the fetus inside you is dead and causing you sepsis, you just have to sit there. Sorry. Because no one is willing to take the legal risk to treat you. I'm so mad. I hope everyone is staying mad about this. Yep. I expect they are. What drives me crazy? I expect you're going to have a lot of traumatic reminders between now and Election Day. I, I hear of a lot just of how bad this is. <clears throat> I hear a lot of hand waving from uh, our friends on the uh, Never Trump side about how people are normalizing this and how people are. No, believe me, we're not normalizing it. We have just we've lived with this so much longer than you have. Mm -hmm. We're just in a constant state of well, of course we're going to vote against it. Of course we're going to give money to it. We don't need to jump up and down and wave our arms. We already know it's bad. It isn't that we're not running around with our hair on fire just because I'm bald. It's that I used up all that energy in like the 1994 election. <laughs> yes, right. And now I just am steady and clear minded Marching. about what needs to be right. done. And I will do it and I will do it every day and I'll keep doing it until there is no more Republican Party. And but we've, we've got our armor on. Yeah. And we're done. And we're, we're marching. That's it. You don't need to, to convince polls. us anymore. But we do need, and I believe that's what our podcast does pretty well, is continue to give people vocabulary to understand what they are seeing mm -hmm. and continue to give them a frame of reference to understand how we got here, why we're here, and where we're going, where the Republican Party wants to drag us. Trump ally Charlie Kirk stood behind his microphone this week and said, I want to make sure we all make a commitment that if this election doesn't go our way, the next day we'd fight. Kirk went on to compare this commitment to those who fought in the American Revolution. What's he going to yeah. do? What are you going <laughs> to do, Charlie? Yeah. Watch it on TV. You're going to you're going to go behind your microphone again and get other people to beat up police officers. That's so, incitement to violence, you asshole. Here's a question. Mhm. Mm how many minutes has Fox News devoted to Donald Trump interview where he said there's room to make cuts in Social Security and Medicare? Well, it's a Trump interview. They should have run the whole thing multiple times, right? Yeah. It's well, like like the Pence story. Mike Pence told his mm -hmm. tale that I'm not so, on Fox News. And right. that's the last time anyone on Fox News. And that ever was a heard. scoop for them. That was huge, but an inconvenient one. According to Media Matters, in the matter of Donald Trump, Social Security, Medicare, the answer is zero. None. Zero. They're not Nothing. running a single minute of that. And they're running less and less Trump rally footage yeah. every day. And less and less impeachment footage because it's which so is, very bad. Which is bizarre because, I mean, you watch Lawrence O'Donnell and it's the DNC oh. hour. Right. It's absolutely Biden's doing great. Here's Biden's speech. Here's Biden's ad. Here's a Senate candidate. Here's a Democratic mm -hmm. Senate candidate. Here's Sherrod Brown for 20 minutes. Uh-huh. And it is 
just, you know, and I watch that from time to time just to sort of elevate, you know, the guy from Hopium Chronicles is on there talking about how, how good things are going. Things are going really good for Democrats. I'd rather be us than them right now. It's good. And I need that reminder every once in a while. Yeah. But you, you watch Fox as you and I do from time to time. We do. We do. And last night, uh, Jesse Waters had an entire segment on smoking toads, people who smoke toad. Or lick uh, them. Or lick, lick them. Liqueur or whatever. And no, go crazy. You hold up and lick, you lick a toad. Psychotropic drugs on a, on a toad. Oh, okay. And you lick the toad. But, but that's what they ran. There's a yeah, million other things out there. And they ran people having convulsions from doing that. Yeah. Because we're scared of hippies. Well, we're scared yeah, we're of scared Californians. Of... We're scared of hippies. They're all drug crazed maniacs. Right. And if you don't vote for Donald Trump, cr- drug crazed maniacs are going to come and kill you. I am convinced that Fox News Studio has what, what I'm, I call a shit box, yeah. which is when everything goes wrong, when every when all of our people are shitting the bed, when everything is fucked up, when all of our little plots and schemes are blowing up on our face, go to the shit box and there's a list of stupid, peripheral, weird stories from California that mm-hmm. you can talk about. Here's an interview with a guy who lives under a bridge and he says, I live under a bridge because I get a million dollars in welfare and un- unemployment checks. And I love leeching off the hardworking American people. Run that shit for 18 hours straight. That's mm-hmm. how Fox. Mm-hmm. And you know what? The assholes who voted for Donald Trump sop that shit up with a biscuit. Yep. They love that stuff. And that's why this is so horrifying to them. Because yeah. along with all of the other bullshit they believe, they believed that Joe Biden is the worst president in history. And we have piles of evidence to prove it. And this is going to, like like the Iraq war, Bill Crystal. This will be over by Christmas. It'll be over in a few months. Yeah. You know, we get in, we take out Joe Biden, and we're done, and we all celebrate. And that's not happening. And there's no way around the fact that it's not happening. You can't pretend otherwise. There's no way you can fly into an Air Force base under the cover of night the fact that you failed to impeach the worst president in American history. And there's going to be hell to pay for this. There's going to be yeah. absolute hell to pay. Uh, in further Fox News, once the impeachment pe- hearings went off the rails, and Lev Parnas mentioned Sean Hannity by name as yeah. someone disseminating Russian disinformation. They suddenly cut away from live coverage, never to return. Never to return. They and never there's another story there. that's just breaking uh, the past 24 hours. Roger Sullenberger, who is my hero, he is the writer at the Daily Beast, oh. who writes about Winred, who writes about... Uh, Good boy, yeah. He's, well, he is. I mean, he writes about, he looks at the FEC filings. Where are people spending their money? Where is Trump spending his campaign money? Mm-hmm. And the latest from him is Trump's legal slush fund political action committee burned its donors' money at the rate of more than $230,000 a day on legal expenses oh. last month. Oh, God. That oh, is God. more than they are bringing in. Yeah. I'm doing the math on my head about uh, $30,000 <clears> a day in legal funds. How many legal spending? How many if how many minutes in that day if you add them up come to everything we make in a year on this podcast? How many minutes would it be? Uh, oh my gosh. I'm just doing that I'm doing that and I'm like, man, you know, we're in the wrong we, business. We don't know. make six figures from this podcast. No, so, oh god no. God no, not even so, close. So, no. no. So no. do the math on that. Like no, yeah. we don't. But we anyway. live in the middle of nowhere where housing is reasonably yeah. inex- oh, no. reasonably inexpensive. I mean, we're, we're our lifestyle okay. is... Yeah. I sit on the sofa and knit and watch cable TV. Mm-hmm. We pay for cable. We do. But we deduct it because we do use it for the podcast. So. Your, your contributions go to pay for our cable television so we can watch this crap and tell you what's going on. Tell you what's so going on. So thank you for that. Thank you for that. But really, our, we are not... Uh, Living the high life, but that's all right. We have each other. That's fine. We're no, we're we're doing okay. I mean, we're doing better than we were ten years ago. And I I just so appreciate everyone who donates. I really, really do. I know. How about some local news, Drift Glass? Absolutely. Um, It all depends if you remember a guy named Darren Bailey. Did that ring a bell? Darren Bailey, such a jerk. (laughs) Yeah, he's he's that right wing kook that Republicans ran for governor against J.B. Pritzker last year, and he got stomped. Well, this time around, Darren Bailey. Uh, dropped back and tried for some lower hanging fruit. You know, the 
stuff that's easier to get done than beating a billionaire who's doing a great job as governor in the state that adores him. Uh, this time he went for the House seat for Illinois' 12th congressional district, and he got stomped again. This time it was a little closer, 52 to 48, in an R plus 24 district. That is bright red, glowing red Republican. So in R plus 24 district, he lost in the primary. This is from WAND News, Springfield's news leader. Quote, four-term U.S. Representative Mike Bost declared victory against challenger Darren Bailey in Tuesday night's GOP primary race for Illinois' 12th district, all but guaranteeing he'll represent the heavily red district for another two years, though Bost will still have to face off against a Democratic candidate in November 5th general election. The GOP primary was widely expected to be deciding race for the district, and it will be. In a move that initially surprised both campaigns, former President Donald Trump endorsed Bost over Bailey last month. Political reporters at CNN and Politico later detailed how House Speaker Mike Johnson lobbied Trump to give Bost a boost. Now he owes him. Bost wrote in a statement that his victory Tuesday night was, quote, only possible because of the backing of countless friends and supporters from every corner of the district, along with a vitally important endorsement from Donald J. Trump, our next president of the United States. Um, that had to kill look. Darren Bailey that Trump endorsed yeah. Bost. Well, Bost screwed up because he forgot to thank Jesus. and that's <laughs> Yeah, Darren of... Bailey wouldn't have forgotten to thank no. Jesus. I can tell you no. that right now. But, you know, this is how... It's supposed to work. It's supposed to be. This happened in Massachusetts all the time. The right. Republican who ran against Ted Kennedy for Senate right. would then get a slot. Yeah. A slot to run for something he could win. That was his consolation prize. Western right. Massachusetts right. House race, state house. He'd get something or right. he'd get a commissioner job. Because he knew he was going to You went to bat. You went to bat for the party, right? Right. So, well, you yeah. Were- you were the sacrificial lamb. You were going to Wasn't, sacrifice didn't yourself. Did Romney run against Kennedy before he was governor of Massachusetts? I think he did. I think he did. I, I think that was right. That. I think I'm, I, Correct me if I'm wrong on that, folks. But, but you'll, you'll put on right. a good show for Republicans. You'll get some yeah. money. You'll get some name. And then Have we'll a, get you a place at the table. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh-oh. That didn't happen. <laughs> and to, to close the circle. And, yeah. Close the circle, Forrest Driftglass. <laughs> according to the Alta Telegraph, Mike Boss says he welcomes... An impeachment inquiry into President Joe Biden. Of course he yeah. does. That's why he, he got does. Trump's endorsement. Exactly, exactly right. Exactly right. <sighs> hey, each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Frankie. Frankie is a multi-toed tabby bengal mix. I did not know this, Drift Glass, that polydactyl cats that have many toes are also known as Hemingways. Mm-hmm. He had because him. Ernest Hemingway loved his cat so much. He did. House and full of many Cuba. of his yeah. cats had multiple toes. And on that island that Hemingway lived and died on, uh, all of the cats there that are descended from Hemingway's cats, many of them have multi-toed. Well, all feet. cats have multiple toes. This one has no, an extra. More than more than five <laughs> per foot. Oh, right. Uh, and Frankie and family have recently decided that they can no longer live in Florida and have moved to, guess where, Drift Glass? Oh. Central Illinois. Oh, I was going to say the Florida Panhandle, but no. no they Central moved to Illinois. Central Illinois. Well, welcome. Welcome, Frankie. Yay. Welcome. Welcome home to Central Illinois. We're we'll so have happy to arrange you're a, here. We'll arrange a play date for our cats and your cat. How's oh, that? No. Oh, disaster. Arrange a coffee, disaster. maybe, with, with, sure. the, with the humans. But yeah. no, no. I'm sorry, Brock, Brock Hussein, the Kenyan usurper, is barely social with the two cats that are already living with him. Yeah. <laughs> Bringing in stranger kitties would not yeah. work. That would be Although a urine sure, fest for the ages, yeah. I am sure that Frankie is delightful. And of course, Frankie eats freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsor. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, your cat will sit on the kitchen floor and demand. That the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh my lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Frankie at our Facebook page or website. Such a beautiful kitty. And you can send your internet kitty, dog, or other pet to us at our email address. 
proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write to us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions! Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. I want to thank the, our new Patreons. We have several this week. Uh-huh. And we had one Patreon that donated $1 per month this week. Yeah. And the difference to us between $12 a year and $0 a year is enormous. It really is. It's, it means um, so much. So thank you so much to everyone who donates to our podcast work, uh, whatever you can donate. And, and again, we just are humbled and, and appreciative of what you give. Thank you. And astonished, frankly. <laughs> well, but it's a miracle. I mean, it is it a is. miracle. <laughs> every, every, every week it's a miracle. But on that note, please don't forget our gourmet coffee guidelines. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is, in fact, our job. And if you can spare five bucks a month, please do so at patreon.com forward slash prolefpod. And also of equal importance, Slightly less, but equal importance. Please share our show on social media. And if you love this podcast, please force someone else to listen. And thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties will have whatever Jared Moskowitz is having. Let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the humping and the popping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the wine and the crying and the shooting. Professional F Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2024 25, GGBG Productions. Thank you, Drift Glass. I love you, darling. I love you too. Bye. Bye.